Good afternoon, um, Mid Canterbury. I mean, it's good to be back here. We're on day um, day two of the lockdown, and I hope it's been going well for you. Uh, it's certainly going well for us here. We're um, battering down and um, getting a few papers read, the books read, and watching a wee bit of Netflix as well. So it's um, it's good for us. But um, as we all know, we need to do it um, to stamp this virus out. And uh, you, as you'll probably have heard today, we do have one case of um, the virus in Mid Canterbury, and that is under control. But it just shows that um, it's not far away. It's not in another county or another island or around the world. It's here, and it's actually in the Ashburton district now. So we need to ramp up and adhere to the lockdown. And um, we talk about the bubbles now. So um, we just need to have our bubble. We will have our bubble, and now we need to stay in it. And um, which that means don't go out to the playgrounds or to play footy or meet your mates or anything like that. That's all over. There's none of that. Um, you can go for a short exercise though. Take the dog for a walk, uh, exercise yourself, just stay away from people, wave to them, be friendly, stay away from them though on your exercising. And um, yeah, it's uh, and we'll just uh, stay stay safe. Yeah, it's a, it's a good reminder, Neil, isn't it, now that the virus, um, <laughs> there has been a confirmed case. It's a really good reminder to, to everyone to follow the rules around isolation, to stay home for the month we've been asked to stay home, uh, and that it's actually kind of more real almost that there is a case here and it's not just something that's happening in the big cities or, or, or somewhere else. Yeah, Hamish, um, I've had some um, calls from ratepayers and some emails from ratepayers about the next rate instalment. So um, wondering if you could... Uh, Get council to take a uh, if you could bring to council a paper to um, have a look at some options around what we can do for the ratepayers. And I know we've got a meeting on the 9th of April, so if you could do something around there and see see what options are out there, because I know that the businesses are hurting, and um, that some of them are hurting really bad because tourism tourism's affected us uh, really badly, and um, some help would be helpful. I say. Yes, and and we. we to be getting some of those emails and we understand the issue um, really clearly. Uh, we'll, we'll certainly bring that paper to council on the 9th of April and talking to some of my um, colleagues and other councils around New Zealand, it's an issue that um, you know, most councils are turning their mind to. Uh, we know uh, that it's not easy and for some it'll be really tough. Uh, and we'll look at some mechanisms that, um, that make the rates just perhaps a little bit easier, particularly in and around your payments and, and potential penalties and time frames and all that sort of stuff. So we will certainly uh, do that. Now. Great, thanks, for that, Hamish. And we're all for also mindful of um, as the councillors that you're actually running a business as well, and you've got some businesses out there now that are shut down, and one of them is the EA Networks, which brings in a reasonable amount of revenue to the council. You're not getting that revenue now either, so we're mindful of that. So um, in the paper that you bring to us with the options. I'm sure you'll take all those things into account and uh, keep our business as of council running because we offer a lot of services out there, the water, the sewage, the uh, the rubbish collection, the roads, et cetera, et cetera. So um, you've got that business to run to and we're mindful of that. Yeah, that's such a good point because council is, is, um, is the provider of some of those essential services and needs to keep those ticking over. And you talk about the water, you talk about the sewage, uh, rubbish collection, um, making sure that uh, if there's any um, issues around roading as we move into a, a, you know, a poorer weather, that we keep the roads open. Uh, of course, we're running a civil defence operation as well now that there's been a national civil defence emergency um, declared, linking back through to Christchurch uh, around welfare, all those sorts of issues. So there's a fair amount of the um, council operation um, still needing to run. Um, so there's the balance isn't there, between having the resources to keep it going uh, while being mindful of the impact on uh, the people that um, pay, the, pay the rates. And, and some of those business people have been mentioning to me that um, their businesses are shut, they, they're not allowed in them because they're, they're isolating at home in the lockdown. And so they say they're not using those services and um, why should they pay for something they don't use? But I'm sure you'll have, a, have the answer for that for them. Well, we will, we will and, and we'll keep talking about it, that some of the things I've just said in terms of, of water and sewage and roads and civil defence uh, are all uh, services that still 
uh, carry on the, the operation of council itself around decision making. Uh, we had a, um, a, a really uh, positive feedback today. We've got some uh, public uh, conveniences open, uh, and one domain here in Ashbridge and one in Methven and, and one at Hines. Uh, and elsewhere, uh, toilets have been closed by councils. Uh, we made the call to keep some of those open because of the um, essential services people and the truck drivers uh, on the road and, and um, needing access to toilets. Uh, and we got some really lovely comments online today around um, congratulating us on keeping those open. But of course, we've got to clean those and continue to service them in order to do that. Uh, so that's a, a small example of the range of things that you know, council is still running uh, that that, um, that the community still has access to. Uh, but we are mindful of the pain, um, Neil. It's a it's a it's a big thing we are going through as a as a community. The economic impact is real. Uh, and we certainly are mindful and we will be looking at those avenues you've asked for. Yeah, thanks for that. And I also heard the um, comments that's on national radio today about the, the um, toilets that the truckies are using uh, because a lot of them are closed and they um, mentioned the toilets in the Hines, which we were just talking about, that they are open, they're using them, and the standard is very high, which, which brings me on to a lot of the work your staff are doing and to keep everything going. And I know they're, they're working very hard and um, long hours at the moment too, some of them, to um, keep everything ticking over the way we want it to tick over. Yeah, that's right. And there, and there's still, we hope, you know, we're going into a month and who knows, it could be longer, and there's still the, um, the, the activity of council behind the scenes uh, that's not just essential services. So we've got people working at home, you know, continuing to um, uh, work away on, on, the, on the work that, isn't quite so obvious, the planning people, the um, consent people, the finance team, there's a lot of people still um, uh, working and uh, that's all part of being a council in a crisis like this. And just also thinking, Hamish, that meeting on the 9th of April, we'll all be, um, we won't be in the building because we don't have to be now, we'll be doing it um, via live streaming like we're doing this message right now. And um, it will be televised that um, meeting, so the people at home can can still see it, and um, they're getting the the tech, uh, technicians to work on it to um, get it hopefully seamless for that um, for that meeting. Yeah, it'll be quite a historic uh, meeting um, in time, Neil, won't it? Because uh, it'll be the first meeting I'm aware of that uh, will take place of of full council uh, without the council chamber being open and no one actually being in there. Um, we were really pleased to see some moves by the government yesterday to pass some uh, emergency legislation to enable uh, there to be nobody present uh, to still have a legal meeting. Uh, it is um, that meeting will uh, still be mostly open to the public, uh, but there will be no place for the public to go to. So then the, the live streaming uh, of that meeting becomes more critical in a, uh, in a transparent democracy. Uh, in a moment, at moments of crisis, where you're trying to do business in a very, very different way. Uh, so hopefully, we get we get all that right. It's a, it's a, it'll be a very different uh, way of operating, and we're going to have a bit of a trial uh, next week, and um, just to make sure the systems all work. And hopefully, by the time we get to the meetings proper, uh, then um, people will be able to enjoy seeing their council action uh, without a hitch. And also, this is the second video we've had of uh, you and I speaking out there to the people of our district, and um, I think they've been well received. So as long as they are, we'll keep doing them as more important information comes along and um, keeping everyone updated out there. Yeah, perfect. It's, it's, a, it's a useful time to try these things, isn't it? And, and if, if they're useful messages, then uh, we're obviously really happy to do that. I know and from the starting point of view, uh, um, sending uh, periodic um, videos to staff to um, keep them up to date as well. So the technology is forcing us to do things a little bit differently, um, but we're finding ways to uh, to make it work. And if this doesn't fulfil their needs, then there's always the um, the resources out there on the website, which is the COVID19.govt.nz, where they can turn for the most up to date information out there on the on the virus. Yeah, and we've always been stressing, Neil, haven't we, all week, um, that there's just one source of truth, uh, that the um, that website of COVID19.gbt, that's the place to get the information. Um, you know, we all know there's chatter on social media and, and whispers and, and rumours. 
Um, you know, we don't know if that stuff's true or not. Um, what we do know is the stuff on the on the official website uh, is um, the expert opinion coming from the government, uh, and we keep reinforcing that if you're unsure about anything, if there's information you need, uh, then go to that website. It's got a lot of really useful stuff on there, and it's the source of truth from uh, from the government at this time. Yeah, Hamish, that's exactly right. That's what they should do. So I'd just like to thank everyone there for watching, and we'll continue to keep you updated as um, updates are necessary. So um, stay locked down and um, stay in your bubble and um, have as much fun as you can when you're in that situation. See you later.